couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lickin' Refers, how are you doing? Welcome to the second tutorial in our Amazing Grace Double lesson. In this video, we're gonna analyze together what Tommy Emanuel did in order to rearrange Amazing Grace into an incredibly beautiful jazzy blues piece. It's jazzy, but it's still a very traditional blues, but a more complex blues than the original Amazing Grace, which I arranged for you and taught you in the previous lesson, which is more true to the prayer sort of uh, atmosphere, which is a basic blues pattern of E, A, and B. Now, what Tommy Emanuel basically did was take these E, A, and B chords and add a lot of passing tones and approach notes, um, which are most of the time um, a fret away from the chord or from the bass note. And in order to analyze Tommy Emanuel's arrangement, I'm gonna use this. Now what is this? This is a snippet. This is one chorus of the Tommy Emanuel arrangement because uh, he then takes it and starts improvising on it. So what I did was I took um, the essence of his arrangement, um, in all its complexity, and I'm gonna go over it with you to show you exactly how he created the beautiful harmonies that he uses and why they're there and what uh, role each chord has in leading the chords into the next um, tension or the next resolution. So he starts, I'm gonna go over this with you first because I trust that you know his arrangement. If not, go listen to it and come back. And at the end, I'll try to play it from start to finish. So basically we're learning this together now. So um, he starts by this. And then it's this. Okay? So this is all E. And he starts with the open second string and plays a unison with four on the third string, but he slides into it. Okay, so it creates an interesting sort of unison. Instead of he plays and then the open E string. Then he plays E. Okay, strings one, two, three, and six. No seven, just a normal major chord. So, and then it's this. Okay, with the open E string as a harmony. Okay, and this creates a ringing sort of a piano chord because you have uh, you have wide intervals there. You have the open E string and you prepare a finger on nine on the D string. And the solo is this. Okay, this is the whole solo, but harmonized by this. So it's seven hammer on to nine, pull off to seven on the second string, and then the open E string by itself, then another seven hammer on to nine on the second string. So it's, okay. This is how it sounds, and you add nine on the D string for complete. Okay, sort of a piano chord. Okay, and what is this? This is E, it's this. Okay, it's taken out of the E shape, uh, the A shape, and this is still E. Now, the root is the open E string. Okay, it's an inversion of E. And this, okay, nine and nine, strings two and four are out of the, okay, the A shape, the bar on seven, the high E chord. So it's this, okay? It's just taken a simple chord and by using an ingenious wide interval, creating a beautiful rendition of a simple line. And then he plays this. line. Now this is a very complex chord progression but it has uh, it has an inner sense to it and it starts by this. Okay? Now this is E augmented. Okay? It's E augmented over G sharp. Okay? It's four on the sixth string with five five six on strings two three and four. So it's this. And E augmented is 
an altered dominant chord, meaning that um, it leads to A, because uh, a dominant chord would be E7, and E7 wants to resolve itself to A. Okay? So it's like a normal blues. And E augmented is just a different sort of tension, but it's an altered dominant chord because it still wants to resolve itself to A. Um, it's a different tension and resolution, so it's E augmented. But why is it over G sharp? It's over G sharp because G sharp is a half step down from A, okay? And we're leading to A, so it's a tension leading to A. It's E augmented to A, but it's G sharp to A, an approach note. It's just a half tone away, which is a traditional bass move. Okay, so it's okay, just like in every traditional um, blues piece. And okay, this creates another beautiful harmony as only Tommy Emanuel can produce. But there's also a solo in between. So you play the chord as an arpeggio, and then Right? You bend seven on the second string and then five, and you put five, six, seven on strings two, three, and four for A with the open A string. So you get this. Right? You arpeggiate the chord and immediately play this. Right? And this is B flat diminished, or A7 over B flat, okay? which is another move. steps. That's the jazzy part, the walking bass part. Okay? It's A7 with B flat on the bass, back to E or E7 over B. Okay? So it's voice leading um, by maintaining the same harmony. Okay? Just E and A, but the bass notes create a more complex harmony. So it was this. A, A7 over B flat or B flat diminished. Okay, so it's two on the second string. You can put two on the fourth, but we're not playing it. So it's one on the fifth string, and you just arpeggiate strings five, three, two, one. Okay, and you get get this. Um, okay. It's um, a signature Tommy Emmanuel slide and pull off. It's 2-3-2 two, two on the second string. Double slide and then pull off on the second string. And then you are page 8 E7 but you start from the fifth string because we're on E over B. Remember? Bass voice leading. So once again at G sharp on the bass. A B flat, B. It was it was completely chromatic on the bass notes. That's the secret of the arrangement. The bass notes create the whole uh, harmony. And um, after you do, you do. He continues the the voice leading this time here. Okay. It's 2-1 on the D string into B7, okay? And he plays 2 on the D string, then um, either strings uh, 3, 4, and 5, and then strings 2 and then 1, or he plays strings 2, 3, 4, and 5 for B7, and then the open E string, and then E again, um, because this is... Um, and then you get okay, this, the next move. So um, again, E over B, okay? and why is this there? Two, one, because we're going from E over B to B7, okay? So it's the same bass note. So you can't lead the same bass note uh, into itself. So it creates 
different sort of uh, walking bass, only on the D string. Okay? And then it's okay? B7, open E string, then E again. Then it's this, 4 and 4 on strings 1 and 3. Now if you watched the previous lesson, you know why, because this is again E, because D, D sharp, E. And it's a D shape on 4, this is E. So you use these two fingers, fingers 2 and 3, because again, another signature uh, triple uh, legato thing, which is this, okay? It's it's four five four two zero hammer on triple pull up. Okay, harmonized by four on the third string. Now you can cheat and play the open second string, which is the same note. Okay, it's okay, but as you can hear, this the open second string is a weaker sort of sound than a fretted note than the third string on four. So okay, it's also a very good practice. Okay? So four and four, hammer on to five, pull off to four, pull off to two, pull off to zero on the E string. And then C sharp minor seven, just a bar on four, five on the second string, and you play strings one, two, three, and five. Okay, so it's okay, B7 to E. Okay, I messed up the triple pull off there. And then you have this, okay? Now, this is a little bit strange, but I'll explain, it's this. Okay, and then back to E. So, it's F sharp 11, it's, okay, it's this, but, he plays 7 on the D string, the bastard, and he forces you to bar the 7th fret. It's Tommy Emanuel, the guy's crazy, it's no secret. Okay. So you bar 7 and you put 10 on the 2nd string, 9 and 9 on strings 3 and 5. And you play 7-7 seven, seven on the E string, that's the melody. And then you arpeggiate the chord, down and up, or up and down, physically or musically. Okay, up to the D string. Then you play this. Okay, which is um, C13 and B13 to B7, leading back to E. Because B7 is a dominant chord that wants to resolve itself to E, just like E7 wants to resolve itself to A. And C13, you, the easy way is this or this. Okay? But you want to bar because you're gonna lift your pinky in a second. So bar 8 and play uh, 10 and 9 on strings uh, 2 and 3. Okay, so you have this uh, 8 on the bass and then 8, 9, 10 on strings 4, 3, 2. Okay? And you can play it any way you like. Okay? Arpeggio or okay? any way you like to, uh, to play it is fine. And then one fret down, okay, do you recognize the pattern here? Okay, one fret, again, approach, approach note, chromatic, okay, and then you let go of the pinky and play seven on the second string, turning this into a seventh chord instead of a thirteenth, so, and then you slide into nine and nine on strings two and four with the open sixth string for E. And then okay, it's okay. this is also E7 because it's an octave of this, the open second and fourth string. So okay. um, it's a country move, so okay. so you slide to nine, then Seven on the E string, and then you slide uh, to twelve from nine to twelve on strings two and four. So it's okay. then you have this, okay. which again a chromatic, a 
approach node, this time on the third string. So it's three on the third string. The idea here is to go from here to here, a reverse turnaround, but the approach note is three to four on the third string. So it's three on the third string. And again, hammer on double pull off on the E string, two, three, two, zero. So it's, okay. And then you play three to four slide on strings one and three. So it's, and again, the approach note to A, which is G sharp. And this, for a moment there, creates a G sharp minor chord. So, and then, right, again, uh, five and seven, or, okay, or, 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 okay, you can arpeggiate anything you like. You can uh, play any sort of solo there using the five and the seven as your solo ending. Any note you want to play on the D string can create an interesting harmony, so he does it, so you can try it yourself. So, right? I like the seventh uh, sound with uh, five on the D string. Okay, and then you play the A, um, A7 over B flat or B flat diminished, and then E over B again. But then he creates a different sort of turnaround. Um, that leads us to the ending in a, in an extraordinary way. So um, um, we had this. Yeah, I keep forgetting that line for some reason. Um, you arpeggiate the E over B, and then you have this. Now what is this? Um, it's E over B, obviously, and then it's C diminished, okay? On strings two to five, you have four, two, four, three, okay? And then you have C sharp minor seven again, like this. It's five, four, two, four on strings two to five again, with the open E string, because uh, he creates a devious uh, chord change there, okay? From minor seven to nine. Okay? But first I want you to look at the bass notes. Okay? Chromatic again. B, C, C sharp. Okay? And that's why he plays the C diminished because it's a terrific transitional chord. And then he arpeggiates um, up to the E string on the C sharp minor seven, and then goes back down and plays four on the second string. Okay, and plays strings one, two, three. Okay, and um, this, okay, the C sharp minor actually starts a turnaround. Now we're gonna talk about the turnaround in a second, but first, um, let's continue. It's 3-2 on the 6th string, leading us chromatically again, approach note to F sharp. Now, I play the 2 with my thumb, because then he plays this, right? Plays another, another one of his uh, legato moves. So it's 3 on the 3rd string, and it's 2-4-2-0, two, two, hammer on double pull off on the E string, and then it's 2 and 3 again on strings. Uh, one and three, and you hammer on two to four. So it's okay. So it's okay. And then you have B seven, and you play the chord. Then okay, two slide to three, slide to two, pull off to zero on the E string, and then you have another turnaround, the last turnaround. But this was. It's supposed to end on E, but then he sticks another turnaround in there. So it's a 6-2-5-1 move. And it's uh, based on the circle of fifths. Don't know if you've heard about it, but we're not gonna get too technical here. We're analyzing a complex uh, composition anyway. 
So it's E, which is the one of the E scale, and then it's C sharp minor seven, or C sharp minor, which is the sixth, leading to F sharp, or F sharp seven, okay? Or F sharp seven, um, which is the two. And then it's B seven, which is the five. So it's one, six, two, five, and it's supposed to end on E. So the C diminished was uh, an approach chord. So and then is this. turn around and you can go back to the first E and start the whole thing all over again um, just without the this uh, like you can just start from E um, and I start with a minor okay, a minor six or D minor uh, nine over A doesn't really matter what you call it okay um, but it creates an A minor harmony um, instead of A major, okay? It's supposed to be uh, something like... Okay? Um, naturally, natural to the, to the scale, it's supposed to be A major, but I find A minor much more interesting here because it throws you off and it leads nicely into... To the rest of the turnaround. Now, if you don't know what a blues turnaround is, I have a lesson for that with uh, numerous examples of blues turnarounds in the key of E. And this one is in there too. And he just harmonizes it um, a little bit dirty. So it's, um, I I play the A minor 6 chord like this, 5-5-3 five, five, on strings 2, 3, and 4, okay, with the open A string, or with 5 on the 6th string, okay, makes no difference, okay, just a matter of uh, if you want to look like a pro or more like a simple guitar player, okay, this is a pro because we have all our fingers on the neck, or, or we're more comfortable this way. And then you have this, okay, this shape. It's four, three, four on strings three, four, and six, okay? And we can play the open E and B strings, okay? We're supposed to, but we play this first, okay? Um, let's forego the name of this chord right now, okay? Suffice it to say that Okay, this is um, just a chromatic move into E. So four, three, four on strings three, four, and six. Then chromatically down one fret, then one more fret, then to E, and you can hammer on the zero to one on the third string. Okay, so it's this. Okay, and the five on the second string becomes the open E string on the second chord, so you can arpeggiate it and experiment with different ways of playing it. Right. Um, and it's based on what Tommy Emanuel does, I just changed the A major into A minor. Okay? This is what he plays. So um, now... I'm gonna do my best and try to play it. So, okay, let's go over it one more time. E, E, and then the E here. Okay, then E augmented over G sharp. A, B flat diminished, E over B. Move into B7, then again, E. The Tommy Emanuel super legato move. C sharp minor seven. Um, F sharp eleven. And then C thirteen, B thirteen, B seven, E, E seven. Then A okay, into G sharp minor. Then 
any way you want to solo it. A, B, flat, uh, diminished. Um, don't know why I keep forgetting this. Okay, E uh, over B. And then it continued the arpeggio, so let's do it again. C diminished. C sharp minor 7. F sharp. Um, B7. Turn around. So thank you very much for watching and before you go practice this please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already There's a ton of lessons waiting for you here. I'm not kidding. There's a ton of lessons hundreds of lessons and Go download the tab from the website the link is below in the description and The tab is for free everything is for free the lessons are for free But if you want to give something back to lick and riff and help out with making the lessons There's a large blue donation button right above the tabs. It's large. It's oval. It's blue It says donate and it's beautiful mesmerizingly beautiful and and uh, if you want to give something back, I'm uh, grateful for any donation you choose to make and I thank you in advance for it. Feel free to share these lessons and I'll see you in the next lesson um, and I'll stop saying lesson, 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 end of lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching this lesson.